Hi folks, my name is David Prigg and I am the current president of Fairfield Glade Residence Services. FGRS, as we so fondly like to call it, is a nonprofit charity with over 180 volunteers providing the social and human needs found needed in our community. Today we are privileged to have with us Joan Fredericks and Ken Schooning, the founding fathers of Fairfield Glade Residence Services. We're here to talk a little bit about the origin and the beginning of FGRS. I want to thank both of you for taking the time to come and share with us your memories of the needs that were found that caused the formation of FGRS and your dreams for the organization as you started it and in the future. Ken, let's start with you. I know that you and Joan led the effort in the 2008 Senior Needs Study that was commissioned by the Fairfield Glade Community Club. How did the two of you become involved in that effort? Be glad to, Dave. But before I start speaking for both Joan and myself, thank you for this privilege to, to share our experiences. Our pleasure. Okay, so getting back to how did we meet. I met Joan for the first time as a result of the Senior Needs Study. Uh, I had heard of her and all the good things she had done in the community, and it seemed like it was a very good idea that she become part of this study. And uh, so she was invited and she uh, gladly uh, volunteered to be involved. I want to back up just a second though about how did the study get started. The uh, committee that we had, the Long Range Planning Committee, which was part of the Fairfield Glade Community Club, decided to do a survey, community survey. And as a result of that survey, things seemed to indicate that our seniors needed some help. And so as a result of that, it was decided, let's pursue this further, let's do a study. So not only did Joan, Joan join the team, but also we had two other folks who, who represented their churches, uh, David Zellner from the Community Church and uh, Judy Etzel from the uh, Methodist Church. Mm -hmm. So this was the nucleus, this was the team that did the study. And the study went on for a year. So. A long year. A long year. A long year, <laughs> yes. But uh, it was interesting that during that process, uh, we met a lot of good folks. Uh, we learned a lot of things about our community that we didn't know about. And so it was well worthwhile. Very good. Well, you must have had an idea uh, at the onset of the study that in a population of about 7,000 people with a median age of 71, that there would be the need to assist the senior population in re in re to remain living independently. What was it about the study results that surprised you the most? And then, Joan, I want to, I want to ask you the same question. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'd have to say the demographics. We knew that our community was a retirement community. We knew that we should expect there'd be a lot of seniors, but the fact that 16% of our population was 80 or older, that was a surprise. The fact that 17% of our population were single, and probably the biggest surprise was the fact that only 50% of our residents were affiliated with a local church. And uh, that kind of tells a little bit of a story because ch churches typically provide a basis of support for seniors. Mm -hmm. That floored me the most too, the 17% of uh, residents who were single uh, because we know and understand that is when people are most vulnerable. When they are single, when they are alone, they just a host of human and social services need to be provided. And at that time, all we were hearing uh, was during our study year, our intensive study year, what we were hearing was the baby boomers are coming, the baby boomers are coming be ready for them because we don't know how in communities we're going to be able to meet the needs of so many people who are aging at this time. So uh, it, it surprised me that we had the, the great number of mm -hmm. vulnerable people that we did. And then later on, after the study, what I learned was that not only were these people um, most vulnerable in terms of health and, and well-being, but they were financially fragile as well. So those yeah, are the yeah. things that surprised me the most. Okay, thank you. Well, Joan, what were the biggest dreams that you had when you started to form FGRS, 
And what are the biggest hurdles that you had to overcome? Uh, I, I, I was a big dreamer, obviously, <laughs> had started working uh, in the church and, and was ready, willing, and able to work anywhere in terms of my knowledge and understanding of government and just how many people were going to be uh, moving into senior or retirement communities. It, it was just awesome. So I thought, oh my word, how will communities ever provide to the array of human and social service needs? And I thought, whoa, we just need to, the dream was to get providing them and that they were then going to be in place forevermore. So that was a, that was a big, big dream, big mm -hmm. vision, big mission. And um, one of the hurdles for me was, at first, as, as Ken alluded to, it was done through the community club, uh, long range planning committee, and then we were the study team. And, and I thought in a limited way that the community club was going to take our a uh, final report, 31-page study uh, report, and I thought the community club was going to take that and embrace it and say, okay, now here is how we community club can provide these services. Well, it didn't turn out that way. We all have a defining moment uh, along the way, and mine was when I went to see the general manager uh, several weeks after the study was completed, and mentioned it and asked what he thought of it, and he asked me, what report? And uh, at that time, <laughs> I said, okay. I went to find Ken, and I said, well, Orville, do you think we can make this thing fly? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ken, what about yeah. you? What were your dreams? Well, I'd have to say amen to what Joan had said, okay? And... Uh, but I want to pick up on what happened after we were told that uh, the community club could not uh, handle this uh, suggested project that the report came up with. So we were challenged, and uh, it was an interesting challenge. Uh, Joan rolled up her sleeves, and uh, I did too. We went out and we searched for people who would be willing to work with us, who had our same ambitions, our same vision, and uh, kind of learned again that Fairfield Glade is a wonderful community filled with people who are willing to volunteer, who are interested in the community and helping. So uh, we put together a, a planning team. It included a director from the uh, board of directors. Uh, it included uh, two of the people from the uh, Long Range Planning Committee. It included uh, a, a representative from the Good Samaritan Society who joined us. It included one of the officers of the volunteer fire department. So a very diverse team, but all mm -hmm. pushing for the same idea that this was something, this uh, providing human and social services and answering the needs of our community was an important thing that we should do. Very good. Well, Ken, you were the only president of FTRS for the first seven years. We recently celebrated our 10th anniversary and now we're into our 11th year. What did you do to have to recruit such a strong, mission-oriented organization with such dedicated volunteers? And actually, that sounded like that could have been a difficult job, but it wasn't. I, I kind of ran through the people who were on the planning committee. Mm -hmm. It turns out that several of them volunteered to become directors, and uh, they, they uh, just continued on in the idea we needed to do something here. And then. Attracting volunteers was, uh, was sim simple from the standpoint that there were other groups within churches and uh, within the community who saw the same need that we did. And here was an opportunity to join a group that was going to be dedicated to our seniors. So it wasn't a difficult job. Very good. Joan, you helped uh, to establish several of the programs, such as the FGRS-sponsored community information events, the Neighborhood Watch Care Rings, Caring Connections program, and many others. You must be proud of these programs that have helped a large percentage of the Fairfield Glade residents. What new programs or services would you like to see offered in the future? Well, first of all, just need to continue and expand the current programs that you have because uh, now in 2019, I find myself on the other end of things needing, first of all, 
transportation program. Uh, because of a disorder that I have, I cannot drive right now. And so that was in our terms of thinking, we got it correct the first time around. It was one of the most needed and most early on needed for uh, senior people. And so please continue to strengthen and expand the programs currently in place. And then we did have a wonderful thing in the community. We had a program called Lifetime Learning sponsored by the Council of Churches. And um, it, it offered all kinds of classes, recreational, leisure, historical, anything and everything that people wanted and needed to continue to learn uh, was provided. We don't have that anymore. I so know. please continue to think of classes, classes, classes. And what we now have added are <clears throat> we need some young, technically savvy people to help us with our mobile phones, our iPhones, the pads, whatever it is. I know I'm doing some tutorial stuff right now, but we need that kind of help. So we need diversity. We need younger people to help us with some of those classes. Okay. Ken, home delivered meals seem to have been the one program that you were particularly interested and passionate about. With you and your lovely wife, Jody, putting in considerable countless hours organizing and surviving and supervising the delivery of meals to the homebound. Why is that program so important to you? And how do you feel about the success it has achieved? Okay, be glad to answer that question. I need to back up a little bit though. When we did the senior need study, we identified 14 different areas of need. One of the top priority needs was home delivered meals. And uh, so the problem we had though, and this is a little bit of our history too, home delivered meals to get that program launched required money that we didn't have. So although we were chartered as a uh, corporation back in 2009, we had to wait until 2012 to put the program in place. The other thing that was very important, and just the way life worked, the Good Samaritan Society decided to build a facility here. That facility provided us a kitchen, a needed kitchen to make the program happen. So with their help and the partnership that uh, has continued since uh, 2012, uh, we've been able to make this program work. And uh, as far as accomplishments, I'm, I'm proud of the fact that this team of 58 different volunteers that make up home delivered meals, uh, as of this month, we have delivered over 21,000 meals. Our Very drivers good. have driven over 26,000 miles. And we have served over 217 fam members, clients. Okay? Mm -hmm. So these are all good things and they're good too because to maintain your independence, you need to have nourishment. And many of the clients that we serve could not either provide it themselves or could afford it because there are some folks that we actually provide meals at no cost. So it's important to the community. Uh, it's important obviously to these residents who need nourishment. And I just like to add that it, food seems to be the first thing that the senior gives up instead of giving up other right. expenses. So it has really been beneficial to them. Today FGRS has seven active programs including a transportation program as we've talked about, a program to greet new residents, a social program for seniors, music and memory to help the client with dementia, and of course the Vital Life program. How and why were these programs developed? And I'll let yeah. both of you talk yeah. about well, that. Yeah, well, let me take the first crack on this one. Um, it's so exciting in a community like ours where there is so much talent and people who are willing to give back to the community through different organizations. Mm -hmm. So one of the organizations was the Fairfield Glade Rotary Club. And they introduced us to a film called Alive Inside. And we saw that documentary about music and how it affects all different parts of a person's brain, particularly, I mean, music is great for all older people, but particularly for dementia, 
those with dementia. So this was a way in which when music is played through the headphones that is familiar to a person from his or her lifetime, they suddenly become just alive, like the, the, the film title implies. And all kinds of things begin happening within the brain so that they are then able to make connections better with loved ones and, and people. So that is one where we worked with our community partners. The Vial of Life was one of our first programs. And uh, we searched over a year through the United States from coast to coast to find a program where people could have their essential medical information, medicine, allergies, doctors, the contact people that they needed. And we wanted it all in a handy container, not hung out somewhere where, uh, like on the front of a refrigerator where the information could be compromised by people coming into the home. So we worked with the Cumberland County Sheriff's Department on this one. And uh, they helped us maintain the confidence that was required here. And this is just such a wonderful, wonderful tool. It will help everyone who is in any emergent situation, okay? And, and, and also along with this uh, vial of life is the business now of just in your cell phone creating persons who are in case of emergency, ICE. Next to the person's name, you just write ICE 1, ICE 2, and these are your important contacts of people to be contacted. Right. So these are just absolutely essential to well-being uh, uh, to begin with in terms of personal safety. And I have a question to ask, just to interrupt you for a minute. David, do you know how many vials we've distributed so far? So far we've distributed over 14,000. Uh, and we should add that now we are not only doing it within the community of Fairfield, Glade, but we are also doing it throughout the county of Cumberland. So that has, has really uh, shown that the, the uh, success of the program. Then the um, Caring Connections program. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the big one for Fairfield Glade Resident Services because first of all, we created a directory of home health related services and resources. And that in itself was just a huge task. Yeah. And I yeah. noticed just this year, Knoxville just had a recent article uh, in the News Sentinel that they have just done that and created this type of directory for the folks in Knoxville. So we had a little bit of an edge on the, yeah, on the need there. <laughs> and we did that and then created this program where we trained uh, folks to become um, a person who would be able to meet with a family, an individual or a family, and help them put the package of home health care services together. Just critically needed, and we have been thanked over and over. People are just becoming more familiar with the services, and so I know I saw here um, one of the articles in, in the paper, the Crossville Chronicle did regarding someone who wanted to thank us and um, for some of the services that we offer. But the deal is now words getting around it is. and people are beginning to know and understand that they can come to Fairfield Glade Resident Services to have some of their needs met. Great. One of the things I want to pick up on here is that of the seven programs you mentioned, so many of them are intertwined. The transportation program, the home delivered meals program, the caring connections program. We deal with many of the same people, the same people. So that's, that's a good thing. It is it's a good, a good thing. thing. The other thing that I wanted to bring up, uh, we talked about our partnership with the Good Samaritan Society. Uh, we ought to say something about our, I'm gonna call it affiliation with the community club because they have certainly given us a lot of uh, advantages, okay? Rent-free use of the uh, convention center. They, uh, they print a lot of our brochures. They even go so far as to provide the cooking help for our annual picnic. They do. So anyway, it's a good, it's a good relationship. It's a good connection. And, uh, 
we needed it. And one of the things that we talked about, the seven programs that are there, uh, good, uh, the, uh, the fact that we provide what we call the continuing uh, information. Okay. Community information. information event. Event. Thank you so much for that. But uh, I think we've produced now over the years more than 30 events. Oh, okay. close to 40. Okay. Where the, the community is invited to come in to learn about things, to learn about like memory and music. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, we think that's been a very valuable thing, and uh, it's all part of our service to the community. Well, very, very good. Well, both of you, Joan and Ken, what advice would you give the volunteers in the future for continuing the growth and success of the Fairfield Glade Residence Services, Neighbors Helping Neighbors? Well, I think you need to be tuned into the fact that uh, our more senior people definitely want to stay independent as long as possible. So therefore, I think continuing the programs that have been instituted, take a look at the other 14 programs that we haven't done. Some of those probably still are viable and should be put in place. Uh, and I think it's important that the programs that you pick and select are well planned, okay? That you don't just do something because it sounds like it's something good to do. But make sure that uh, the program not only makes sense, but it's well organized and that it's well managed. Joan, do you yeah. have any advice? One of the things that we have heard that just warms our hearts over and over again is thank yous from people and telling us how professional we were. So in terms of all of the time and training uh, for volunteers, um, continue that and continue to keep finger on the pulse of the community. What is needed? What are the emerging needs? What are the new needs? And without fear, just look at them, think about how universal they might be in the community, mm -hmm. and then look at it and go toward establishing some way of meeting those needs. Well, very good. Yeah, I'd like to throw in one other thing. Well, absolutely. As time goes on, I think it's going to be important that uh, Fairfield Glade Resident Services gives consideration to having your own facility. Uh, we have been fortunate in having very generous people who have sponsored us and, and given us uh, a place to hang our hats. But I think it would be a good thing if some thought were given to what's going to happen five years from now, ten years from now, especially when Peavine Road becomes a, a major uh, business hub. So uh, I would recommend that some serious thought be given to that future. Well, I want to thank you both for all that you have given to the community and for the residents of Fairfield Glade. You and your efforts are and will be inspiration for all who follow in your footsteps. I'd like to present to each of you this decorative crystal engraved memory of your dedicated service to the community of Fairfield Glade. Thank you and God bless you both. Thank you very much. You're Thank quite you. welcome. Most, most deservedly earned. Thank you. And what I'd like to also do, speaking for Joan again, if she lets me, okay. <laughs> David, I want to thank you and the current board of directors for the great job that you're doing. Oh, amen. You are making this organization even better than when we left it. Well, thank you very yes, much, Ken. Yes, it's my yes, pleasure yes. to really, I really enjoy this work.